I take a look today at identifying parts of an expression, and, and I feel like this is a relatively easy task to do. Um, we just have to understand what the different parts are, uh, how to identify them, and then when we start looking at some expressions, we'll be able to uh, easily identify those different parts. It's important to know the different parts of the expression because that's going to help us later on as we start solving these expressions, and uh, it'll just make things very, very easy for us in the long run. So our vocabulary terms today are uh, the words and the parts that we're going to be actually looking to identify. So the first thing we're going to look to identify is the term. Uh, these are the parts of an algebraic expression that have been separated by operations. So uh, you, we, we've seen all sorts of different expressions like 2 plus n or y minus 7. And the different terms are those parts that have been separated by the addition sign or the plus sign or those types of things. So that's what we're going to be looking for is the parts that have been separated by observation operations. The next thing we're going to take a look for Pardon my S there. I'm not sure why I have an extra S located there. We can edit that out, hopefully. Uh, constant. We're going to look for a constant. Now, just like when we talk about something, is we constantly do something. It's something we do over and over again. It always stays the same. It never changes. That's kind of the same way with this. It's a term without a variable. Um, if I add 7 to something, no matter what I do before that, I'm always adding 7. So even if it's 2y plus 7, no matter what happens with the first part, the 2y, I'm always adding 7. It's the part that does not have a variable. It's the part that always remains the same. And then lastly, let me move my box here, the coefficient. The coefficient is the number that is directly connected to a variable. Um, we look at that. It's directly connected through multiplication. 7b, uh, 2l, or 2r, those are the different ways that we would represent a coefficient. It's that number that's smashed right up against another variable, which always means that we have multiplied. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can identify these different things. Move this out of the way. So here you see I have 4y minus 3. Now we were, want to first identify the terms, the parts of the expression, and then we're going to be more specific and identify the coefficient and the constant. So remember, the terms are the parts that are separated by an op operation. And notice the operation up here that's, that's very visible is the subtraction. So there's two parts. There's this part and this part. So my terms are 4y and the number 3. Okay. Those are the two terms. Now we don't need to worry about adding in the subtraction sign at this point. We're just concerned with what the different parts are. Okay. Now the coefficient, remember, we look at the part that's connected to the variable. And there's only one term that has a variable, and that's 4y. What's the number that goes with that? Well, that's the 4. So the coefficient is 4. We're multiplying 4 times the variable. The constant, what's the part of this that doesn't have a variable with it? That's the 3. Pretty simple. So once you've identified the different parts of the expression, then you can go ahead and decide what's the coefficient, what's connected directly to the variable, and then what's the part that doesn't have a variable? What's the constant? It's as simple as that. Let's try another one here. This is relatively easy. We have 12b plus 6. So there's two parts. There's this part and this part. Those are my two terms. They've been separated kind of by this imaginary wall here at this operation. So I've got two terms. 12b is a term, and so is 6. Now the coefficient, it's the number that, that's directly connected, squished right up against the variable. And in this case, there's only one term that has a variable, and that's 12b. The number that goes with 12b is 12, so 12 is the coefficient. The constant, this number that no matter what, it always stays the same because there's no variable attached to it, that's 6. So that's how we can easily identify those parts of the variable, those parts of the expression. And the third and final example here for this part, 2x minus 1. Again, kind of an imaginary wall here at the operation. There's one, two different parts. So my terms are 2x and 1. The coefficient, the number connected directly to the variable is a 2. And the constant, the number that doesn't have a variable with it, that's a 1. So you try some. Your turn. 3m minus 7. Go ahead, hit pause. Identify the terms, the coefficient, and the constant. When you've done that, hit play and see how you did. All right, let's see how you did. I'm going to look here, and there's two parts. There's 1, 2. So my terms are 3m and 7. The coefficient is the number that's attached to the variable. In this case, 3 is attached to the variable. The variable is m. And lastly, the constant, the number that doesn't have a variable with it, that's 7. Hopefully you did well there. If you didn't, see where you made your mistake. Look back at the definitions at the beginning of the video and adjust. We're going to try one more here for you. Your turn number two, 5d plus 6. 
to pause, identify the terms, the coefficient, the constant, hit play to see the answer. Okay, 5D plus 6. We've got the imaginary line here through the operation. There's two parts, 5D and 6. The coefficient is the number that's attached to the variable. In this case, it's a 5. And the constant is a 6. The number has no variable. Now, that's relatively easy. Those are just two parts, two terms, pretty basic expressions, which this is pretty, pretty much all the expressions we're going to work with this year. But we can identify more in bigger expressions. We won't be solving the expressions that you're, I'm about to show you. We won't be actually working on solving those during this year. But it's, it's a good practice to help identify the different parts. So let's make a little bit more of a complicated one here. We've got 3h to the second power, or 3h squared, plus 4y minus 6. So I'm not only going to identify the terms, the coefficient, and the constant. I'm also going to identify the exponent that's, that's in this one. Because exponents, when it comes to algebra, are very, very important. So let's take a look here. Terms. If I do my imaginary lines here through my visible operations, I have three parts. One, two, three. The first term is 3h to the second power. The next one is 4y. And the last one is 6. Now, coefficients. What numbers are attached to variables? And you have to be careful here because in the first term, 3h to the second power, that is a number that's attached to the variable. 2 is attached to the variable. However, it's attached in a different way. That's an exponent. That's not a multiplication problem. So 2 is not a coefficient in that first term. 2 does not count. It's only the 3. Now, in the second one, we've got a 4 that's attached to the y. So I have actually two coefficients in this one. My constant. There's only one number up there that is not uh, connected to a variable somehow, and that's the 6. And my exponent, as I said before, was 2. So we can have multiple coefficients, multiple constants, and we can actually also have multiple exponents, as you'll see a little later on. Pretty simple. Just more terms. We're still identifying the same things. It's just adding more terms. Here's another one. We'll kind of make imaginary lines here through the visible operations. And as you can see, there's four terms in this one. We've got 9b to the fourth power is one term. 6 is another term. 2e is another term. And then 7. I like to write them in order. I mean, you can put them in numerical order or you can put them in order based on coefficients, constant, that kind of stuff. It's up to you. Now, my coefficients, I have two. There's a 9 with the b in the, to the fourth power. And there's also a 2 with the e. There's two coefficients in this one. Constant. There's two constants. 6 and 7 are two numbers without variables. And there's only one exponent. The 4 is my only exponent. There you go. So we had four terms in this case, two coefficients, two constants, and one exponent. Okay, It's the exact same thing. We're not going to solve these problems. We just want to be able to identify the parts. Okay, So you give it a shot. You've got 5r plus 7 minus 4 plus 2f to the third power. Hit pause and identify the terms, the coefficient, the constant, and the exponent now. All right, let's see how you did. I'm going to draw my imaginary lines, and you don't have to do this. This is just something I do to help make it easier for you to see what I'm working with. I've got one, two, three, four terms in this expression. 5r, 7, 4, and 2f to the third power. Okay. Now, my coefficients, coefficients are 5 and 2. Those are the numbers that are attached to variables. Constant, I have two numbers, 7 and 4, that do not have variables with them. And there's only one exponent. That's 3. Take a look at how you did. Go back and check the definitions again if you need to. But we'll give it one more shot here and see how you did here. The last one you have is 9 plus 7c to the 4th power plus 2d to the 5th power minus 10. Go ahead and hit pause. Find the terms, the coefficient, the constant, and the exponent. All right, let's take a look at this one. I'm going to make my imaginary lines here just to help help me visualize it. One, two, three, four terms. My terms are 9, 7c to the fourth power, 2d to the fifth power, and 10. My coefficients, I have one, two coefficients. 7 is attached to the c, so is 2. 2 is attached to the d. Those are my coefficients. The constants, I have two numbers that do not have numbers or variables attached to those numbers. 9 and 10 are my constants. And then I have 
one exponent, two exponents. Like I said earlier, you can have two exponents. So I've identified my exponents as four and five. Again, the idea behind this is just to make it easier for us when we're talking about how to solve these. We can start identifying these different parts by their official names and using proper math vocabulary. As always, if you have any questions, please stop in and see me before school, during lunch, or after school. Thanks, guys.